All right, perfect. You can be half asleep for the beginning of class. <laughs> and let's start, let's start in butterfly pose in our lovely upside down praying pose as I like to think of it. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Allow your heels to be two hands length away from your groin. First, grab onto your shins and give your chest a good morning stretch. So you lift up your chest, maybe drop your head back if it's okay for your neck. Take a full breath in again. And then with your exhale, curl up and roll down. And, you know, have a little bit of action going forward into the pose. But then as you hit that place where your body starts to resist, start to soften instead of forcing. So let your hands relax, let your jaw get a little slack. And maybe with your eyes closed, start to deepen your breath for these first couple of breaths in our yin pose. One of the ancient practices with yoga is this emphasis really on breathing in different shapes. I don't know if you had the pleasure as a child to play different instruments. But it's the difference in shapes and material of these different instruments that lends them their unique sound. So in each one of us, we have a uniqueness to the inner shapes of our body, you know, whether it's the inside of your mouth or the inside of your rib cage. But then as you move your body, those shapes are changed, adapted. So every time we explore breathing in a different shape, we expand our capacity to be alive with differences. And as you breathe into this shape, maybe you notice the subtle changes as your body relaxes and releases in this yin pose. That it's not just a static experience, but dynamic. And you may even notice that there is another part of, you know, this chemistry, so to say. So you have your body in a particular shape and you're pulling in your breath and you're releasing it out. But then you also have this invisible effect of your feelings and your attitude. You might even notice that you already have practiced saying something to yourself this morning. Notice if you can soften your shoulders. You can let your knees be heavier.
Not only is this forward bow a gesture of reverence, but it also is a gesture that brings us kind of back into ourselves or brings our, our focus a little bit inward. And with your next inhale, start to slowly and softly roll up. You're going to keep your feet like this. And then you're just going to casually come down onto your elbows. You can even wiggle your elbows a little closer together. So your shoulder blades pinch together and kind of push your chest out a little further. And if it's okay for your neck, you can drop your head back. If it's not okay for your neck, you can keep your chin towards your chest. So sometimes this posture is called reclining butterfly pose, but it's also called yin fish pose. And while the butterfly is an air being, the fish is a water being. And those differences might have nothing to do with how you feel the differences here. But notice what it's like to breathe into this shape, to be in this posture. With our breath, we can keep bringing ourselves back to the present moment. And with our breath, we can really connect to the element of our practice that is, you know, touches the invisible and reminds us of the holy nature of life in the human body. Let your elbows slowly slide out to the side and let your upper body come down to the ground and take one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. While it's become tradition to measure aliveness or deadness by brain activity. The truth of it is we know that our life on earth dramatically starts with one breath and somehow will end with the last. And like the trust in the cosmos with the sun rising every morning, setting every evening. Again and again, we breathe in and out. Trusting that the next breath will happen. We 
we notice that when we bring our attention to our breath down into our body, it can root us in the present moment. When our attention goes into our thinking, sometimes it can run away with us. Sometimes we can find ourselves caught going over events that are long gone. Other times we find ourselves throwing our attention forward. So like future tripping. But feeling how your breath moves through the unique shape of your body brings you back. With your next inhale, lift up your feet. And for most of us, unless you're super flat-footed, you'll see a magical little, little divine hole and see if you can try and dive through it. And up you are. And you can wiggle your legs, shake them out. And let's see, pull them back in. And we'll do, we'll do one, one more yin pose with two wings, so to say. So stretch your legs out wide and dragonfly. And we're gonna lift your elbows high like a little, you know, ska dance. Let yourself twist a little bit. So this twisting actually very subtly is already warming up your spine. And then twist over your left leg first and start to bow your head down towards your knee, allowing your chest to be bowing over your leg. And it might not be very far, or maybe your head's dropping down and touching your knee, but let your elbows be heavy. And again, notice what it's like to breathe in this shape. So even in our yin yoga, we're breathing through our nose. And um, Sarah Powers, who was one of my teachers for yin yoga, she talks about doing a gentle unjayi breath, which is a really, I think, very apropos for our times. And so this gentle unjayi breath, you can translate as like a gentle victorious breath. Um, which is so lovely that victory doesn't just happen from power and might, that actually there's also a nature where it's a softness and a calmness and a gentleness that can be victorious. So in our breath, we can connect to maybe even truths we can't quite yet put into words. We connect to this unique shape, this unique moment. this unique meeting and we connect to really the reverence of our own humanity, the tenderness, the ephemeralness. Ephemeral means that it's only there for a moment and then it's gone. And with your inhale, roll up. And maybe you wanna try something different and you do like a little hippie dance, still twisting your spine. Maybe even letting your arms slap around you if you're like a little messy hippie. 
<laughs> and then a uh, final twist, find yourself over your right leg. So cool that you come with a pair of legs. Not just pair with legs. <laughs> Thanks. Let your head drop, let your elbows be heavy. So it seems so many places that we turn out in the world right now, there are polarities. There is a camp of this versus a camp of that. There's this versus that. And we start to notice that even in our own holy nature, there is this duality right leg, left leg, inhale, exhale, awake, asleep. And that as we craft and sculpt our being with half of what we know and half of what we don't know, we are continually working on bringing these multiplicity of dualities together. So whether it's, you know, coordinating how you walk, or balancing your sleeping and waking so they are both fruitful. or conducting the work to try to bring our, you know, our thinking nature together with our feeling nature. It's no accident, no accident that we're actually, the, the human being is called an individual. That which is undividable. It feels a little ironic at times, doesn't it? Take five more full deep breaths here. And then with your inhale, roll up and then spin back to center. Maybe shake your legs a little bit and then slide them in and come either into easy pose, into half lotus, full lotus, floating lotus. <laughs> okay, floating lotus might be a reach. And then find the length in your spine Maybe hike your shoulders up into your ears, pull them back and drop them down. You can drop them down a couple times even. And we're gonna sound three ohms from here. So bring your hands to heart center. Feel the warmth of the inside of your palms. Close your eyes, empty your breath. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Ah. 
and then release your hands, release your legs and place your feet on the ground. I don't know, a calf length in front of you. <laughs> Just place your feet in the ground. That happens naturally. Hold onto your shins and start to pull your belly to your spine and rock back into like it's a seated cat. <laughs> and then inhale, pull your chest forward, opening your chest, letting your shoulders drop down. And again, with your exhale, pull your belly in, reach your back back. <laughs> Inhale, slide your chest forward, open up your heart, let your shoulders drop, maybe even look up a little bit. And then with your exhale, curl into it. And this time, curl all the way down, roll down and stretch your legs straight up to the sky. Now you're gonna take your arms out as a T and you are going to, <laughs> you're gonna put your palms flat on the ground. Let your right leg reach down to the ground. And with your inhale, you're gonna lift and reach your right hand to your left foot. And then exhale, lower down, switch your legs. So these are kind of like slow-mo sit up variations. Pull your belly in as you lift up. Exhale, switch. Inhale, up. Exhale, switch. Inhale, up. Exhale, switch. Inhale, up. Do one more cycle. Exhale, switch. Inhale, up. And then at the end, bring both of your legs straight up and reach both your hands straight up, pulling your belly down to the ground. And then release your shoulders down, keeping your legs up. See if you can reach your heels and just start to pulse your heels up to the sky. So it nearly feels like you're bouncing your butt on the ground. Try to let your feet not come closer to your face and you'll notice it's a very deep abdominal strengthener. So if your feet are coming towards you, stop it. <laughs> Have them go straight up and said the movement might be a lot smaller. You can make, see if you can get it faster. So five, four, three, two, one, and then hug your knees into your chest and start to rock and roll. Move back and forth in your spine. And then exhale, mm, let's go to plank this time. Uh-huh. So find your way coming to plank. Mm -hmm. So plant your hands underneath your shoulders, reach your feet back. With your exhale, see if you can bring your right elbow to your, sorry, right knee to your right elbow. Did he? Left knee to left elbow. Now, if you're advanced, you were doing the opposite. So try it this way, right elbow to left elbow. Sorry, that'd be left knee to left el uh, right elbow. One more cycle, either one, either crisscross or straight ahead or both at the same time. And then come to plank, move forward. So you really feel like you're about to fall off of your toes and then slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Keep your elbows in. I said slowly, inhale, lift up low cobra. Feel the power in your toes, pushing down your legs active and then exhale softly, gently down to the ground. Now get really active from your legs. Feel it start from your toes and inhale low cobra. Maybe a little higher low cobra. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Now, yogi's choice. If you feel warm enough to go up into upward facing dog, try it now. If you want to do another cobra, go for it. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, find your way to downward facing dog. So especially if you have like lower back issues, one of the things to be mindful in your practice is keeping your back extended. So in this downward facing dog posture, find 
that you're going to bend your knees a little bit. If your hamstrings are tight, bend them more. And then imagine trying to lift your butt cheeks up to the ceiling. So it's like you want to, you want to lift really the lower part of your butt upwards. With your knees a little bit bent, you can feel how this extends your spine. Take another full and fueling inhale. Empty your breath all the way and then hop or walk your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring your hands to your shins. Reach your chest forward, your shoulders back, your neck even on line with your spine. And with your exhale, release and bow down. Now this time you're going to fly your arms up like wings, extend your legs fully, pull your belly in and do this version of a halfway lift. And with your exhale, let your arms wrap behind your knees, let your head drop. Now this time, drop your fingers down, line up your fingertips with your toes and then see maybe you can keep your hands there and extend your legs all the way or maybe just part of the way, halfway lift one more time. Exhale, release and bow down. Push down with your feet and roll all the way up to the sky. Stretch up tall and catch your left wrist. Inhale, lift up higher. And with your exhale, you're gonna pull your hips to the left and your arms to the right. Feeling a crescent shaped moon in your body. Inhale up to center and switch sides. Grab your right wrist, help yourself get taller and longer. And with your exhale, staying lifted, bend to the left hand side. Inhale, lift up tall, maybe even look up. And with your exhale, bow down. Let your head drop. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, exhale to chaturanga. So step back to plank and lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So I used to teach that if your legs are on the ground, do low cobra. There's a slight variation here. You can do low cobra or high cobra um, or upward facing dog, any one of those three, but make sure for all of those that your knees aren't on the ground. So if your legs are active, it supports your lower back. Take another fueling inhale, empty your breath all the way and then walk or hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your arms up for extended halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down, hugging your knees. Release your arms, push down with your feet, roll up to the sky, stretch up tall, catch your left wrist. Inhale a little higher and with your exhale, bend to the right. Inhale up to center, catch your right wrist and with the exhale, bend to the left. Inhale, lift up tall, maybe a baby back bend, and with your exhale, bow down. Let your knees be soft as you bow down. Inhale, halfway lift, walk or float, exhale, chaturanga or the ground. Keep your elbows in, Frankie. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. It's also cool to breathe. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find your foundation. So close your eyes for a moment and feel that you have the weight equally distributed in your hands and your legs. Hands and your feet, arms and your legs, hands and your feet. Now, even if you don't think you need to bend your knees, just try bending your knees a little bit just to get that reach of your buttocks up. Beautiful. Take another full inhale. Empty your breath all the way, and then walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your lift. <laughs> Exhale, release and bow down. Root down with your heels, roll up, stretch up, catch your left wrist, and with your next exhale, arch to the right. Inhale up to center. With your exhale, switch the grip and arch to your left. Inhale up to center. This time, hook your thumbs and take a back bend. Inhale up to center. Exhale, dive down. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Yay, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. Now, get to know your right leg a little bit. You just kind of threw it up into the air, but can you feel it? Notice what your toes are doing. Maybe wiggle your toes, spin your ankle around, bend and straighten your knee a couple of times. Maybe even lucky enough to like kick yourself in your butt. And then bend your knee, let your hips spin open. And rather than letting your whole side roll open and flipping your dog, don't do that yet. Really try to measure and feel. You want your hips twisting, but your shoulders squared to the yoga mat. Be active in your right leg. Your toes are active. Your heel is pulling towards your buttocks and your knee is reaching for the ceiling. Take another full inhale. And with your exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your leg long. Exhale, relax your right leg down. Inhale, extend your left leg and get to know your left leg. Wiggle your toes, roll your ankle. It's like a little bit like, especially in a, in a morning yoga practice, you're waking up all your separate parts and kind of getting them to dance together and bend your knee, let your hips spin open, keeping your toes active even. Yeah. Feel your heel pulling towards your buttocks. And then re-square your shoulder blades, perhaps. Yes. Let your head be relaxed, looking at your, the inside of your right foot. If your toes are turning a creepy white shade of yourself, maybe see if you can lift up your toes. <laughs> and then with your exhale, bring your left knee to touch your left elbow or higher. Inhale, come back, stretch your leg long into the sky and relax your leg with the exhale. Introduce another little bend into your knees. Let your hips reach up and back. Maybe feel how it changes your spine. You're letting your Anjayi breath be a little bit more of this victorious, like, you know, um, yang breath. It's producing heat and fire in your body. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, lightly float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your arms up for extended halfway lift. And with your exhale, grab the back of your knees, let your head drop. Now, let your hands brush against your yoga mat as you keep your knees low and reach up. Ooh, good sasana. Now, slide your toes together. You can have a little space in between your heels if you want. Squeeze your legs together. Feel that there's a tuck. There's just a little tuck in your tail. So you're pulling your abdominals in. Your attention's on the lower belly here. Now see if you can sit down lower and lift the corners of your mouth higher. Now imagine you have sparkle fingers. <sighs> Let your shoulders relax, drop down. Now sink down so you really you can feel like you're having like flames come out of your thighs. <laughs> yeah, see yoga so hot. All right, take another full inhale, exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or flow, exhale, chaturanga or the ground. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your knee, let your hips spin open. Inhale here and exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. With your exhale, bring your right foot to your right thumb. Let your left hand stay on the ground and open up your right arm into a twist, lizard twist. Take another full inhale here and then exhale, sweet chaparanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Fingers spread out, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your beautiful left leg up to the sky. Bend your knee, let your hips spin open. Be active here on your inhale. And then exhale, bring your left knee, left elbow or higher. Inhale, stretch your leg long. 
exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb and wave open your left arm coming into the lizard twist. Inhale here, get active in your right leg and then exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And by putting that little bend back into your knees, you might find your downward facing dog starts to be more of a relaxation, a home to come to, a place to recover. You can feel your breath getting more intense. By design, this is part of what we're after. We wanna challenge yourself and find these edges. Take a full inhale, empty your breath all the way and then walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees deeply, drop your booty. And then bring your hands into prayer. Now, before you do anything, you're gonna just twist your upper back to the right. And then with your next exhale, drop your left elbow to the outside of your right knee and then pull your left knee back. So it's lined up with your right knee. Push down on your bottom hand. See if your chest can lift up so your hands meet right in between the twins. Yes. Nipples or boobs, depending which way you orient. Take another full inhale. Exhale, twist more open. Then inhale, ooh, katasana. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Twist your thoracic spine first, upper spine, and then drop your right elbow outside of your left knee. Push down on your right hand to lift your heart up. Breathing into the shape, feeling the challenge, pull your right knee back. Then inhale, ooh, katasana. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, exhale, chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, tap your right knee to your left elbow or higher. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. With your exhale, step your right foot all the way forward to your right. Then wave your right arm up, coming into the twist. Now feel the power here with your inhale, lift up crescent lunge. Yes. Let's take a couple moments here and breathe. Feel your back heel pushing back. Your back leg is extended. With your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. And again, first twist from your upper back and then drop your elbow to the outside. Push down on your lower hand, feel it give you space. Take an inhale here and then exhale, chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, bend your knee, let your hips spin open. Inhale here, then exhale, tap your knee to your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Exhale, step your foot forward, rise up with your left hand for the lizard twist. Uh-huh, I got that. You too, Lena, great. And then lift up crescent lunge. So you really feel this is an abdominal movement. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center, keep the uprightness first, twist your back, and then drop your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Push down onto your bottom hand to feel the lift in your chest, feel the power in your right leg, pushing your heel back into nothing in a way that's empowering. Take a full inhale here. Exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then walk your, mm, 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 walk your hands back to your feet. 
Take your feet as wide as a yoga mat. Let your toes spin out and then come into garland pose, yogi squat, malasana. So you start to feel that you've gradually turned up the heat. And we're gonna do just a little blast of like open flame before we come and cool down. What? Open flame. <laughs> we're just gonna do a little bit more heat rising. Oh, I never thought of torch and torture. Anyways. <laughs> now, first you can do is lift up your hips so they're level with your knees. Maybe take your elbows out to the side and then see how low you can stay and you're gonna walk like this up to the top of your mat. Notice if you started to gradually lift up, sink down again with your hips and then walk back. And then sink down, malasana. Inhale, lift all the way up to a back bend. Exhale, malasana. Inhale, lift all the way up to a back bend. Exhale, malasana. Now inhale, lift up and maybe jump up and then come all the way down to malasana. Two more times, with or without a jump. Lift it up and come down. And gong to one more time. Noch einmal. Up, down, beautiful. And then walk your hands forward, come back to downward facing dog. Take a full inhale, just sigh out your exhale. Take another fueling inhale, empty your breath all the way and then walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, <laughs> too soon. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees, drop your booties, inhale, ukatasana. With your exhale, open arm twist to your right. Inhale up to center with your exhale, open arm twist to your left. Inhale up to center, exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift, walk or float, exhale, sweet chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky with your exhale, tap your knee to your right elbow. To your left elbow. Inhale, stretch your leg long. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Raise your right arm up, open your wing. And then inhale, crescent lunge. And with your exhale, open up warrior two. <sighs> Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, bend your knee. Inhale, tap your right elbow to your left elbow. Inhale, stretch your leg long. Exhale, step your foot forward. Lizard twist, wave your right arm open. Inhale, abdominal muscles, lift yourself up. Ukatasana, oh, not Ukatasana, uh -huh. exhale, open up warrior two. Whatever you call it, it was hard. Inhale, reverse your warrior, keeping your booty underneath you. And then exhale, sweet chaparanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And then jump your feet through your hands and come onto your butt. And then again, put your feet slightly away from you. Curl down, pulling your belly down first and let your feet slowly lift up. Come onto your back, place your feet back down and line up your heels so you can touch your heels with your middle fingers. And then inhale, roll your hips up into bridge pose. So feel the power in your alignment. So you want your heels right underneath your knees so that when you push your feet into the ground, you can feel that you have the power to lift your hips up. Lena, I think you need to bring your feet um, just slightly closer together, but bring your knees over your ankles. 
Yeah. It's not that big of a move, but you noticed how that empowered you actually. And then slowly roll down, bring your knees up over your hips, bring your hands back behind your head, inhale, lift your head up off the ground with your exhale, bring your right elbow to your left knee, extend your right leg, inhale back to center. We're going for a slow bicycle, yogi bike. It's like up a hill bike. Now, if you want, you can stay at this nice languid speed or you can speed it up. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bridge or wheel. Don't think about it, just do it. Yes, beautiful. It's okay to have some shaking going on. Beautiful. Again, the same correction with your legs a little bit, Lana. Yeah, and really think about rotating your inner thighs down to the ground. Go one more breath longer than you think you can. And then find your way back down to the ground. And this time let your feet slide out and your knees drop together. Notice your whole body is flushed, is, is warm and warmed up. And we're gonna do one more back bend here. So Yogi's choice, either bridge or wheel, slide your feet in, find the foundation, up you go. Now start to spin your toes in a little bit more, Frankie, you got it. Feel like you imagine this posture goes to you standing up. So really feel into your feet, let your hands also be pushing down. Turn it on for five, four, turn your right foot in, two, one, and none. Roll down to the ground, slide your feet out, let your knees drop together. Working in a way that challenges us, even these very small moments, already builds our capacity. Now, <laughs> lift up your hips. You can separate your knees, lift up your hips and just slide your hips to the right a little bit. And then bring your right knee over your left knee. Hug your knees up to your chest and then drop your knees to the left. Take your gaze to the right. Take a full inhale and with your exhale, just let it slide through a sigh. Oh. You've done a great job. And then bring your knees back to center, unwind your legs, slide your butt to the left, bring your left knee over your right knee, and then come into the twist, keeping your knees at least as high as your hips. Noticing even in your twists, when you engage your abdominals, it supports your lower back. So twist in your twists more safely. And notice maybe the difference of the quality of your breath here towards the end of your hour long practice.
maybe also notice the shift in your feeling and your thinking. As undividable beings, we can't send our body into an activity. Oh, sorry, we can. But we, it's detrimental for us to let our body do one thing when our thinking and feeling is doing something else. It is continually a practice of bringing our whole selves into whatever, whatever it is we're doing. Whether it's doing the dishes or writing a paper or going for a walk. Allowing your breath to root you in the moment. And then unwind, bring yourself back to center and stretch your body long for Shavasana. The little sister to the little brother to the big D word. <laughs> So it's like if, if sleep is a little brother of death, then I think Shavasana is the little sister. Do you want um, a blanket, Frankie? Okay. Let, let your breathing relax. And instead of daydreaming or tripping out, you can allow your breath to help you feel your body with your eyes closed.
With your next inhale, invite your sweet breath to the edges of your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes or allow movement to help you get to the edges. Maybe just wiggle your knees. And then stretch your arms over your head on an inhale, getting long. And then with your exhale, curl into a ball and roll onto your side. Noticing the vitality, vibrancy in your body. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to heart center. Find the length in your spine and close your eyes. And notice when you close your eyes, you can be with everyone who is in this class in this moment together, even if we're not physically in the same spot. We're going to close with one ohm. Empty your breath. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye, invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say, Namaste. And so much love. Woo! Yeah, great job. Well done. Um, yes, go out there and be awesome. <laughs> um, so best of luck in your day today.